Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. Got another video for you in the uh, build log series for the Thunderstorm build. That's the uh, Case Labs Merlin SM8 case with the ASRock uh, OC Formula motherboard, the Fantex uh, cooler, the Corsair AX1200i, and a bunch of awesome uh, Bit Phoenix Spectre Pro LED fans. And up in the top is the Aquero fan controller. Uh, this particular one, of course, is the air build for now. And uh, later on, you'll see all that empty space in that case get filled up with water cooling equipment. But for now, we're going to show you how, uh, how well this case performs on air and how well we can cool uh, heavily overclocked i7-3770K. So on the table here, we're going to get ready to start uh, cabling this guy up. We have um, the... First we have the cables from the Corsair AX1200i and then gonna finish them off pieces that you're gonna see are gonna be those uh, Bit Phoenix Essentials Pro Pack cables those are uh, black and blue the uh, theme of this build is black and blue if, you could, if I could have got black and yellow I would have gotten them but they didn't have them so black and blue with all the blue LED fans so uh, we're going to simulate some kind of thunderstorm and lightning in this case. We've got a bunch of uh, Bit Phoenix Alchemy cables. And then over to the left I have a number of different clips that I use. So we have uh, clips to secure cables. So after doing the cabling on the back side of this case, I've got to do a, uh, a nice job of tying everything down and getting the cables on. So one of the things that I use, if a case has some built-in uh, tie wrap mounts that's great I'll be using those but I also have cable clips to um, also use to help dress the cables neatly and I got various sizes and then if needed I have some sleeving and heat shrink tubing to be used as well too so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get started now use the uh, cables and all of the uh, Bit Phoenix products to be able to dress the cables nicely uh, inside your viewing area and also on the back side of the case and uh, so let's get ready to do that I'll, I'll take you through it's pretty straightforward for the most part except for when it gets to dressing that could be artwork in some cases and we'll see uh, how well this piece of art turns out so next up power supply cables now in this case they have space right here in the bottom to dress the cables through and so I'm going to go ahead and feed it through there right away. Alright, and we have up at the top of the case, right there is where we're going to come through to get the uh, four pin and the A pin on this motherboard. And uh, it's nice that uh, ASRock did that, they put that connector right on the edge of the board, which is uh, so smart to do. Um, many times you find some of those connections are all on the back and you got to run a cable all the way the hell across the motherboard. So we don't have to do that. We're going to uh, see if we can bring these cables up and they will go up there now we have extensions for both of these guys so uh, let's go ahead and grab those we have these uh, beautiful Pit Phoenix Pro Pack Essentials cables that's going to connect into the motherboard main power connector all right and then we have an 8 pin for the EPS 8 pin and then on this one we only need 4 pins and so that one we got 4 pin extension the Phoenix Alchemy and this is uh, really nice nicely sleeved as well just like the uh, the alchemy I mean the uh, bit Phoenix pro pack now it makes sense it's made by the same company 
but uh, you, they could skimp if they wanted to on different lines, but they didn't. So this is uh, beautifully sleeved, so we have some black and blue and black. So no issues there, and I'll dress this later. Right now I'm just going to get them through and connect it up, and then we'll get the uh, cable dressing going. And motherboard power should be right around here. Let's see if I did that. All right. <clears throat> All right, motherboard power is not there. It's up here. So I'm going to get the four pin connected. Swap them around. We have the motherboard power connection. Next, uh, we do have the graphics cards cables and run those, the power cables to those. That's one. Don't know why I'm counting that. Okay. So far what we have is um, the main power connected to the power supply going out the back of the case and I have the main 24 pin ATX here and then at the top if you can see I have the uh, the 8 pin and the 4 pin uh, cables up here or cabled up to the motherboard now uh, what I'm going to do here and oh, I'm down here I have all of them dressed out I have two sets of uh, PCI Express cables all connected uh, but I'm not going to put them in until, uh, I'm not going to dress them yet until I get all the other cables done. Because they're kind of big and wieldy and I'm going to cable up the motherboard now with the uh, other connections. So uh, let's get those going. And we know we're going to need SATA. We're going to need a, two SATAs. And we're going to need some 4-pin Molex to provide power to the connection in the back for the uh, uh, controller for the Aquero. So I'm going to run that now as well. I'm going to go ahead and take the Molex power connections. I'm going to bring that up and out into the case to connect up the power to the uh, Aquero. Inside the case there, so we'll see. I'll push it back through if it's not needed, and then for now, we have our SATA power connections right here. It may be better that I install the uh, hard drive out maybe. I don't know if power that cable's on there. And it looks like it's on there fine. Alright, so we still have to dress these power cables. Right now just get them in place. Alright. Now for the Aquero I was going to use this Okay, what I found is that the power connector, or the pin size, it seems, for the power connected to the Aquero is very loose. No matter how far I connect it, 
uh, how far I push on it to it, it just seems too loose. So the little adapter cable that I originally put in here, this uh, multicolored one, is, uh, is snug and it was very difficult to remove anyway. So I'm going to dress these cables back behind, behind here. All right, so we have uh, we have those pieces connected and power connected up. I do have some excess cable here that it's not going to be needed, so that will be dressed back out of the way. And what we'll do now is we're going to start connecting, uh, feeding the cables through. Now what I'm going to do is start feeding through the uh, motherboard cables. Alright, so we have power and reset. Typically right down in this area here. audio and audio typically is way down the end of the motherboard down in this area here so I have some extensions we'll use them because they're sleeved and then we have two USB 3.0 ports in here and this motherboard I believe only has one USB 3.0 header so we will run these it's in this section right here. Actually, it might even be up by the motherboard. So, uh, that will have to run accordingly. And this one will be wrapped up back here for now. B3.0, I'll have to run all these guys and let's get the motherboard connections done here. Now this front I.O. panel that I selected for the uh, case labs has four USB 3.0 ports and I showed you before the uh, two cables coming from it uh, one I just wrapped up here for now and the other one I plugged into the motherboard right here now here's the other connector that I just showed you this motherboard then has obviously plenty of two USB 2.0 and I don't have uh, so I don't have any use of any USB 2.0 for uh, connections right now so I need to take a look and see about um, some USB 2.0 um, panel connections alright so because my front I.O. only has four USB 3.0 and this motherboard only has two I ordered the uh, an adapter that will get me uh, four more USB 2.0's to put to the rear I.O. panel so those are cheap uh, adapter cable plate so I'll have those hopefully tomorrow uh, but now we gotta install the SATA cable and coming with the ASRock motherboard, there's actually four or six SATA cable connections. And I have a couple here right now. So let's, uh, we're going to use SATA, the uh, 6.0 gigabit connections. And uh, we're going to do that, see, for better performance and short boot up time, we suggest you connect the HD on SATA port 0 to 5 as boot device. Alright, so we're going to do that. And that is the SATA 3's 0 to 5. Alright, 
Let's check. Alright. Three zero is this orange one. And that's gonna be the SSD. Hard drive is going to be one SATA one. So we have these cables through here. They'll be nicely, neatly dressed out of the case here. And the lowest one is SATA zero, the zero port. And we'll go ahead and connect this puppy right up to the to the SSD. And then okay. the one for the hard drive. So we have all of the data and power connections made now, uh, except for the uh, graphics cards. And I will uh, I will add those. Uh, but right now I'm going to go ahead and dress up all the main cables that have been protruded through the back and I will also clean those up although with the door on you won't see that but these are going to get cleaned up as well so here's where the artwork begins now one thing to remember on the back of this uh, this motherboard tray of course is removable so you really don't want to have any you don't, you don't want to secure any cables to this back panel here. Although it's nice and easy to think to be able to do if you ever forget about it. Or when you go and slide anything out, it's all going to hit the back of the tray. So you just got to remember that. It, you know, obviously, it, it maybe it's obvious. but So I'm going to now begin the dressing of cables. Now one of the things we have is right up here, these cables. So I'm going to go ahead and start running dressing these first and also going to incorporate that fan uh, cable that I have as well now this case does ha have some I'm going to start up here with the uh, the ATX and the EPS power connection on the motherboard I'm going to run in these cables now you notice this case uh, case labs has um, some tie wrap point mounts on there and uh, I will uh, look to use them always wherever it's possible so what do you think? Uh, I was able to get all the power cables installed there. I don't have the PCI Express cables coming through yet and you can see why I decided not to do those yet. There is so much that needs to be dressed up along that space on the left hand side of the motherboard tray that uh, I just kind of do it in layers. I did the main motherboard uh, power cables first, these guys, and then I dressed in the um, SATA power cables and the Molex power and then I did then I did the uh, front IO really originally I, I did connect it up but then I ran it you'll see that's the last piece that's run around the outside I uh, since I don't have a second hard drive in this spot I decided to um, put a tie wrap mount and tie up the unused USB 3.0 from the front panel so that's one the other one I dressed through it and I run it out into the other side to the motherboard tray and the only thing that's got a little from work to do is this is the uh, LED switch power. I have to still finish uh, cabling it up, but it's going to get tied down right here. So, um, although that's hanging out, basically, and then the uh, uh, SATA cables, I loop back and they are connected up to the drives. So, uh, they're separate from the power. Uh, they're dressed out of the way. And uh, I think... Uh, I think that's not too bad, not too shabby for it, uh, and it, it does stand out obviously because it's on the, uh, you know, uh, it's all that black cable on the back, the background uh, for the white uh, chassis. But uh, I think uh, I think we're in good shape. Uh, I s routed some cable at the bottom. So, for my my opinion, truly, when you uh, are dressing cables in a case uh, or a rack. Uh, that's uh, basically that's where you get some of your uh, creative juices flowing, and it's uh, it can be a work of art 
uh, if you do it uh, if you do it right. And so right now it's functional. And now I'm going to go around the front side and let's take a look in dressing the cables up so they look nice coming out of those ports. And then once everything's all said and done and everything's fired up and we're sure it's working, then I'll cut the tie wrap uh, clips that are hanging off there and make sure everything's uh, settled down. Let's see what it looks like on the inside right now. It doesn't look bad. Cool, and it's kind of covered by the uh, power cables. This is the switch that I have to, uh, the wiring for the switch I still have to do. And then this is going to get hidden back out of the way here. So I will uh, get all this bundled up. And it won't be in view, or should not be in view of the, uh, with the door closed. So, uh, but. Alright. So let me work on switch panel. And then I need to put in the graphics cards and then run the the power out for the graphics cards and then have those dressed in. And obviously they're going to come through this spacing right here. So uh, I'm going to have to make some room. But uh, they'll all come either through there or probably maybe some will come back through here. One more whirl. Now I took some time to mount this uh, vandal switch to control the LED board and uh, went ahead and uh, took my last uh, panel, uh, one of the uh, filler panels, and I spaced it out in case I wanted to make add other switches on this panel in the future, so that's why it's over to one side. But I went and drilled out the hole, mounted the switch, and uh, I actually went to uh, Radio Shack and got these uh, crimp terminals so that I can easily pull them off the panel and snake them through because this uh, this um, vandal switch harness was already pre-wired and made by performance PCs uh, so I have uh, I have that in that connector the Molex connector I'd have to de-pin it to get it through this hole so I wasn't going to do that and plus it makes it easier to service and take in and out so I'm going to go ahead now and mount this in the front of the case and then I'm going to go ahead and start um, I'm going to install the graphics cards and then run the graphics uh, power cables, dress those up back here, and then uh, we should just about be ready to start uh, loading software, loading the OS. So let me go ahead and, uh, and do that. Right, so we've got it here now. I'll put it in here. And I put it over to one side so that I could mount one in the middle and one over here in the future if I needed to. So uh, that's why it's spaced over there like that. Alright, I'm going to dress up these cables here and then I'm going to cable up the PCI Express. Cable. need to make this mess look better. Alright, now let's uh, see. Let me rejig you so you can see. Alright, now what I'm going to do is take the this mess of cables down here, feed them through the uh, passage in the bottom here, that grommet, and then bring them through here uh, to where the graphics card is going to be. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and spin it around and do all that and bring it through. Then I'll show you how I'm going to dress the cables in the back of the uh, system. Alright, so I've now I've taken all of the cables from the, the PCI Express cables out from the other side from the power supply and I'm, since I've already got all this tied up the way I like it I'm not going to uh, try to run these up and down. I mean I like the way that is right now I gotta clean it up a little bit but there's only so much space and I wanna I'm gonna use as much as I can to keep the cables in a position where if I have to get to them to get to you know the CPU cables I only have to undo a couple uh, so down here obviously there's four of these cables 
So I'm taking them through, and so I don't have a big mass to deal with here. I'm bringing them across here, tying them down. I'm using the Case Labs tie wrap mounts uh, so far on these here. And now, coming back, I'm going to use this space here, and I'm using a self-adhesive tie wrap mount. Now, I don't know, I don't remember where I bought them from. I know you guys are going to ask. I'll have to find online who carries them. I think 3M makes them. I know 3M makes them, but I don't know the part number or anything, so I'd have to look that up. All right. All right, so we have, we have these cables now here. All right, now I still have access points if I need it there. And I actually can get my finger through here, but I think I've got everything cabled up. I don't need anything else through there. All right, so now it's time to take the uh, cables through. Coming through with black and blue, and then black. So each graphics card is going to have a black and blue uh, essentials pack cable, and then it's going to have a all black bit Phoenix cable. So now I'm going to connect them up. And then I've got to figure out where I'm going to tie them up to. So obviously dealing with all these cables, when you add extensions, you, you have to hopefully you have a case or you have to come up with a method to be able to make uh, do with all of the excess cable that you're going to have from behind the motherboard tray. So using these extensions wasn't so bad in this one for the power supply but I did have to dress it up out of the way. The 8 pin uh, also actually made it a little bit easier because sometimes power cables from the power supply is pin on your case just make it to your motherboard connection. But here you have a bunch <clears throat> and I had to put them back out of the way so uh, so that's just something to consider. Uh, you know some power supply makers like Corsair allow you to buy the whole kit. You can buy a whole um, ex a whole cable kit, uh, white, black, blue, uh, I forget what colors you have now, that you plug right into your power supply so you don't use the ones that came with it. Uh, but they're pretty expensive. You know, the, the, the ex these extensions are inexpensive and they're great and great quality. So the trade-off is you got to find a place to be able to cable, uh, put your cable uh, and dress it so that uh, you can put your rear panel on, obviously, and then also make it look good on the front. So right now I'm going to turn it around just to see how much... Uh, play we have for the cables and we've hardly done anything because they just made it through. All right. And then let's go back on the other side and see what that did for us. That's not too bad. All we're going to do is work with this right here. Now it seems to just want to lay right here and putting the door on, I'm going to have to do a test close on the door to see how well it does. So, is that, mo is that all the cables we got to deal with? Yeah, the only other thing that we'll add is some USB connections when the, US the 4 port USB 2 comes. So that's going to plug in here so and go down to this cabling. And to do that, I've got to install some graphics cards. All right, we have the graphics card in. Now the second uh, graphics card, I will put this in SLI later, but after I've got everything software loaded and everything running. So, and also it's because my um, the other uh, 680 is on my test bed right now, so I can't take that down at this time. But it will uh, wind up going in here as soon as my uh, original test bed card gets back. Okay, so we're ready to um, start uh, fire it up and start loading some software. Curious to see how the Aquero works uh, without any software loaded on it yet. Oh, there is a connection. I need to uh, put the USB connection between the Aquero and the, um, and the motherboard. 
So let me uh, read up on that and then I'll show you how that is uh, connected. Alright, the Aquero has a pretty long and nicely sleeved USB cable. So I've got to plug it into the Aquero and also uh, if you see some of those cables hanging down up there those are thermal probes or thermal sensors that uh, I just connected up. There's four in the package. I put them on sensors one, three, five, and seven, and I'll I'm, I'll dress them in the case later. But uh, let's get. Of course, this is going to go out through our challenging grommet hole. We have all the fan power. Oh, right that wasn't too bad. All right, plenty of cable length. So, let's see, we're going to dress him along with these guys that come down here. Alright, so that's pretty good. I'll tie him up along with those, and he's on his own, and let's go see if we can connect them up. Yes, perfect. I'm going to tie them to the front panel I.O. cables that come down that way. And they're up by the hard drive. And around the SSD. So we've got the Aquero powered. We've got the USB connected to the motherboard. We have four um, temperature probes. We've got everything dressed up, all the fan headers, the uh, LED switch. Um, we have to wait on the second graphics card. All right, then let's do, let's do a quick check fit of the door and see if the uh, this side panel door will close. So this needs to get uh, brought in flatter, this, this section. Alright, so what do you think? We got them flat, same depth as the hard drive. So let's try to close up the door again. So we have the uh, back side of the Merlin SM8 thunderstorm system cabled up using the BitPhoenix Alchemy cables and the uh, BitPhoenix Essentials Pro Pack and the Corsair standard power supply cables, SATA cable, audio, and uh, USB 3.0 and power switch cables. Basically, everything's run, tied back. I used both the tie points from the case and also I added um, self-adhesive tie wrap mounts that I can put tie wraps through in a couple places I also use self-adhesive clips. So here I'll take you for one quick close-up. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way. Those are the uh, ATX and EPS power cables. And we have a USB cable curled up out of the way. Fan connections coming down to the main power connection with the uh, Essentials Pro Pack cable going through for the main power. We have the uh, ModSmart LED board with all of its power cabled up and power feeding through to power up the Aquero and uh, also some of the uh, and all of the LED power light connections come through. We have the front panel connections then all along the middle to the right of the SSD is the main power cables and then coming up through that section there there's power for the SSD and the hard drive. The SATA cables are looped up out of the way, the SATA data cables uh, in between the drives and then you have all of the 
Bit Phoenix and Alchemy uh, PCI Express cables coming through for two graphics cards. They are all tied up. Um, I paired them down near the bottom so they would stay flat and not bulge into the door. And then those come out from the power supply are tied down and looped back so that there is a good space to uh, lay the cables. Alright, so that's the, the business end of the case. And now we're going to turn it around and uh, set up an area with a display and a keyboard. Start loading uh, the OS. I'll give it a nice spin for you. Anyway, all right, ESP, fans, all installed here. Let's get, uh, let's get it set up next to a display. All right, and turn it well, on. I've got Windows loading. All right, so today we received a uh, four-port USB female slot adapter. Basically, it is from StarTech, and it is this plate. And it is this plate down here in the corner. That's the four-port USB 2.0. That's connected to the two USB 2.0 uh, ports on the motherboard that I had not used, and I didn't use them because this mother the motherboard has one USB 3.0 uh, connector right up by the main power and my case, the Case Labs, has a I.O. panel in the front for four USB 2.0 so uh, I didn't have any 2.0 ports on the I.O. panel to be able to be used so I installed the uh, StarTech 4 port and the other thing that we added here was some of those uh, thermal probes you see hanging down off the Aquero uh, those are going to be uh, routed and mounted in certain key points in the case to get a thermal profile of the case and uh, I'll do that but I have to first load the uh, Aquero software suite uh, I believe it's the Aqua suite so that uh, I can run uh, the software and set up profiles for the fans right now the fans are on 100% and uh, so we're going to run it like that I'm going to run some uh, uh, Intel burn in and we'll run it for uh, for a little while and get a uh, stock profile of the the cooling in the case and the Fantex on this 3730K uh, just at stock speeds. So let's take kind of one more look around the, the case. Right, so from cable management, you saw me uh, cable this guy, tie it down. I tried to do my best to keep power and data s separated got all the fans cabled up and the LEDs from the uh, fans cabled up to the Monsmart LED station hard drives are installed graphics cables uh, power cables are all tied down nice and neatly out of the way and um, we have the um, Alchemy and the Bit Phoenix Essentials cables r running into the case on the other side so they look nice and all the excesses uh, Put up together back here so that you uh, you can actually close the side panel. You saw me uh, get all that worked out. All right, let's put the side panels on. So you do see some of the uh, thermal probes, but you won't see those once I have them dressed down into the case. And the only thing that's missing now is the second uh, graphics card. So we'll be putting that in there just as soon as I can uh, when I have the uh, test bed 
one installed and I'll have the second Geoforce GTX 680 mounted inside that case. So uh, yeah that Fantex cooler is still pretty big and uh, but it looks pretty good in there. Yeah, if those those thermal probes weren't hanging down so much let's see if we can get them out of the way. So there you go there's the uh, air-cooled thunderstorm. Now let's uh, turn it on and let's get the lights off. Now right, all, right now all we have is the lighting from the fans that are illuminating the case. I do have some other lighting that I will be installing uh, so you will get to see that um, probably in the next video uh, after I get through uh, some benchmarking. But uh, here we have the uh, thunderstorm build right now set up. Let me take you off and we'll take a look real quick at the uh, top of the case as well. So for now, that's it from Ron's and Nut. I hope you liked uh, this uh, video. If you did, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. Uh, next video will be um, a full up uh, benchmarking with uh, overclocks. We'll see how close I can get this uh, processor to 5 gigahertz on air. So you'll see that. And we're also going to uh, add a second GTX 680 and do some graphics benchmarks as well and then one other surprise but I'll save that for the next video so I appreciate it I hope you guys liked if you did please like and favorite and if you're so inclined please subscribe that's it from Ron's and Nut thanks for watching